Welcome to Licking Non-Vanilla, a sex-positive hour of talk about kink, sexual mores, and writing dirty words. So grab a cup of cocoa, your favorite easy chair, and lube as we go sailing into the dark, sweet waters of all things naughty. On Licking Non-Vanilla, with your hosts, Ralph Greco Jr. and M. Christian. We've reached you. This is uh, Licking Non Vanilla with <laughs> Ralph Greco Jr. here in the in the wintry wilds of New Jersey. Actually, this is starting, and across the uh, aisle, and but always close to my heart, um, in uh, in in Eugene, Oregon, is uh, who is that over there? My my co-host, uh, Chris, otherwise known as M. Christian. Yep, from the wilds of uh, frosty but not snowy Eugene, Oregon. Right. I'm jealous. And I'm actually jealous of our guest today, where she is. Our guest, let me introduce, well, I'm going to let, as we always do here in Licking Lime Vanilla, we let our guests introduce themselves. So our guest today is... Dr. Karen Eilber. I am a urologist uh, specialized in female pelvic medicine in Los Angeles. Big brain, Chris. We, Chris, we are well outmatched today, let me tell you. <laughs> well, I was going to say, got, it's like... We got big brain scientists, man, you know? Well, as a as a sort of graduate of community college, I'm calling it. A, I mean, <laughs> yeah, keep up with this. Actually, um, I've watched a lot of YouTube videos. Therefore, that's I feel right, I'm yeah. an expert. Right. <laughs> Actually, the good what, doctor. Before I, have, I go into have, surgery, I you know Google what I'm doing. So you know, <laughs> yeah, I watch like a lot of ER. What, what, I don't know what surgery, you. right? Yeah. Don't tell me you do know. not kill patient. <laughs> right. yeah. Mark. <laughs> Don't you bring your phone in with you so you can watch it at the same time? Right. Yeah, that's right. Okay. So, um, the good, I, I love saying the good doctor because we sound so professional. Right. Because no one ever the, says the bad doctor because that's just weird. What's, <laughs> where's that, that, where's that, that they, um, the George Carlin joke? Somewhere in the world is the worst doctor and someone has an appointment with him tomorrow. To that, tomorrow. Nice. <laughs> so, what, what do they call the last person that graduates uh, from a medical school? Uh, MD, right, doctor, just like the first doctor. Person. Yeah, right. doesn't matter. Um, so, the good doctor and I met because we did an interview before about the product we're going to talk about, um, and we mm -hmm. just did this on the phone. We never saw, we never met each other on this way. Um, and I was, I was, I was convinced what she was talking about, and we, we had to get her on looking on vanilla because this is really interesting stuff from an angle of the. The stuff that we usually talk about, you can tell I'm Italian, right? Um, from the angle of you know, the stuff we talk about. I can tell you from Jersey. <laughs> yeah. That, like, does that come across? Um, so the angle of the stuff we talk about is, you know, um, sometimes Chris and I get, you know, we get a little bit salacious and ribald. But today is going to be pretty, not ser so serious, but, you know, um, yeah, I guess serious in a way. Anyway, Dr. Seriously salacious. <laughs> Seriously salacious, which is the which is the which is the name of Chris's. Uh, that's what's printed across Chris's underwear. Anyway, <laughs> doctor, let's get to this. What have you developed, and why should we know about it? And what it what is it? And I can actually show the product as you talk. We're just gonna jump right in, huh? Please, no. I'm <laughs> we, we don't even have. To, we don't even get a drink before Harry. <laughs> no foreplay here, lady. <laughs> Do you want to get a cigarette afterwards? Uh, um, I, I, told, I told you, Chris. I told you she was gonna be fun. <laughs> My kids don't think I'm funny. I think I'm funny, but um, I think you're so. You know, you know, there's it. The the short version is because I take care of a lot of women and I do a lot of surgery that can affect sexual function. You know, I have to mm -hmm. ask about how it is, and so I repeatedly heard over the years, I'm not sexually active, and of course I ask why, and so many women say, well, because it hurts, because you know I'm dry said okay go try whatever just go buy some lube and they all came back or not all but a lot came back and said you know i'm still not sexually active because the lube that i tried actually made me feel worse it burned it hurt it irritated mm -hmm. me so i looked at you know a lot of the ingredients in the common lubes at the time and you know there's all these like focus on clean natural products and you actually see that a, 
a lot of lubricants actually contain chemicals that we no longer want to put in any kind of beauty products, and yet we're putting that inside of a very important part of a woman. Not only that, then it ends up on, of course, the skin of, you know, her partner. So that's how we started that. And, um, you know, the other problem is when you want to feel sexy, right, you put on sexy lingerie. You typically don't put on your grandma underwear and a torn up T-shirt. So if you're pulling out a lube that looks like toothpaste, that's another reason why our packaging, we wanted to make it sexy and discreet. So, like, if you're traveling, you know, it doesn't look bad. It's also sustainable, so it's refillable. I don't know, Ralph, if you realize, but you can actually just order the refills for it. So many we reasons talking, why. We talk about the refills, right. Okay, and right. Um, most importantly, though, we, as a urologist, um, you know, I know obviously how male stuff works, and I take care of women. So the ingredients were specifically chosen to enhance the normal arousal response, right? It's not just about getting lubricated or getting wet. It's to hopefully also improve a woman's own natural response. So to develop that, though, it took some time. I am assuming you just you just don't say, okay, well, I want to make this. I'm gonna I'm gonna get get into my basement and put a couple chemicals together. I mean, it takes I mean, time. You, and you could, takes, but uh, <laughs> right. you could it would be a very good product. <laughs> right, right. Um, yes, and in fact, when we started down this road, you come to discover that lubricants, believe it or not, are considered a medical device, and so oh, theoretically. I didn't know that, Chris. I didn't know, you know, that. that's what we talked about. The, I'm, I don't mean to cut you off, but real quick. No, that's okay. We were talking about that when we first spoke, and you said that to me. And then just this week, I was at on a seminar about a couple products, and somebody said the same thing to me. Chris, I'd never heard that before. That me either. That, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm surprised. I'm happy about it because it's something that's yeah. obviously very important, and it, it should right. be considered a medical device. Um, so I'm really happy to hear that, but it's something I that's never thought of. No, no, no. So okay, go ahead, doctor. I'm sorry. I just was. Just yeah, I mean, it's that, considered a medical device, but, you know, if you don't have FDA clearance, you know, I don't think they're taking you off the mark or anything like that. But because, you know, I am a physician and I wanted to, you know, make the safest product that I could, we got FDA mm-hmm. clearance, which, of course, you're right, Ralph, takes several years. And mm-hmm. in the midst of this, my co-founder's sister, unfortunately, got metastatic brain cancer and was having a lot of pain. And this was also several years ago. And one of the nurses who was helping take care of her said, you know, if nothing is helping her, you should really try to get some CBD and give it to her. And this was when you couldn't just go to the store and buy CBD. So my Mm -hmm. girlfriend, um, my co-founder, got whatever special permission and got her sister some CBD and was the first time that her sister was out of pain. So then my co-founder says, well, if we're trying to make a product to help with pain, why don't we make a lube with CBD in it? And I'm like, whoa, we can't get women's vaginas high, right? Like, I didn't know anything about it. You don't learn about stuff like well, that in medical school. Well, doctor, I, I don't know about you, but but I can get a woman's vagina high. But that's <laughs> okay, but I wanted to put it in a bottle. So oh, right. you, you can't, yeah, this, this stuff is not, you can't market all this. Come right. on, go ahead. Right, you can't put that in a, in a bottle. Um, Come on. So that's how we ended up also making a different lube with CBD. So the FDA cleared one is water-based. The one with CBD, of course, has CBD oil. Um, And so that's why, and the FDA doesn't recognize CBD products at this time, which is why that Mm -hmm. one is not FDA cleared. Mm -hmm. So that's how we ended up doing that. And here we are today talking to you two fine gentlemen. Well, thank you. Um, you don't know us well enough to say that, but uh, um, yeah, I might take it back at the end of the the, end of the year. I I will take it back now. So, so, but you have other products on the, in the glisten line, right? We do. We have yeah. um, some because so was so interesting is before you I sent this to do, me. Mm-hmm, yeah, it's bath salts that actually are, for lack of a better word, lubricated also with oil with CBD in it. So when you soak right. in it, it really relaxes your muscles, really makes you feel good. So you right. know, it's kind of a whole routine, if you will. You know, you can mm-hmm. either. Use the bath as your foreplay, then use the lubes, maybe use the bath again. But, you know, it's all kind of just to help you relax because also, realistically, when everybody's busy, you know, it's so it's so interesting. Like, society makes it seem like you have, you're, like, turned on all the time. But the reality yeah, is, right. like, if you're working and busy, it's got to be, like, the mood or the, the situation gets in the mood versus the mood spontaneously happening. At least for mm-hmm. those of us with two X chromosomes, that's typically how it works. Might be different mm-hmm. for you. <laughs> No, no, it's true. I mean, it would, it was you, you start? It starts hours before 
just by what you're doing and how you're how you're reacting. You gotta be out of your day to day. That's why, like you know, one of the things you kind of look forward to during vacation is actually having sex that once or twice a year when you go on vacation, right? <laughs> yeah, <you know. laughs> that's what vacations are for, right? Uh, that's why you try so, not to so bring your what, kids on vacation. <laughs> that's well, yeah. So, so tell us how what what the other products are. So just so we 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 glit, mm. we get all over that. What, what how many products do you have? So we oh, have God, the so. two lubes. And then we have the bath salts, and then the lubes and the bath salts are available in their full size. And then each of the containers to the full size are refillable. So we're trying to be, you know, cool. environmental friendly. And then we mm-hmm. also have a body wash um, that's, mm-hmm. you know, not irritating. So you can kind of use it down there or wherever. Mm-hmm. And those are our main SKUs. Currently, right now for Valentine's Day, we have a special box that also uh, comes with a vibrator. Um, oh, okay. But that's limited edition for now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You sent me a condom too. Do you sell? Do you oh sell yeah, so oh, thank. Wow, you're a bet. I should hire you for sales. Yes, actually, that's very. I don't even know how that blanked on that. You guys make me nervous. Um, <laughs> so here's another factoid. Yeah, here's another factoid. Condom condom companies are not required to list all the ingredients for that the condom is lubricated with. So it's less and less common, I think, for there to be non oxanol 9, because that can actually be kind of irritating um, for okay. quite a mm-hmm. few people. And in fact, supposedly, I don't know if this is true, repeated application of non oxanol 9 in your mouth will actually cause numbness. So if it can okay. do that, um, and I'm not really sure if you really want to be numb in that area, but. Um, I don't I don't ever, no, I mean, for no reason, you know. And so yeah. that was another thing that I heard from a lot of my patients was they couldn't figure out why they felt so irritated with sexual activity. And you come to realize it was probably the condom and what they were using. So we really encourage people to use the condoms that are on our website are dry. So they're non-lubricated. And then that you can use those with the water-based lube. Because, of course, you can't use an oil-based lube with condoms because it might break down the latex and it defeats the whole purpose yeah. of the condom. So... Oh, first of all, let's let me go no further than saying this is licking non-vanilla. Um, so we get no, we're licking sea salt and caramel here. like the flavor of our loop. <laughs> and there you go. <laughs> How everything, gets, everything is synergistic. It just all comes right. around. You know? It was like fate. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna let Chris jump in here. Chris, jump in here with with your your you know your your very pertinent knowledge of of all things worldly because you know that's who you are. But you know. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I'll uh, let you jump in here with a couple of questions if you have any. What are you talking about? I'm, I'm, I'm just, you keep making these references. Like, I mean, right. aside from I'm, me I'm and joking. the cat, there's no one here. So I guess it right. must be yeah. like, you know, yeah, I'm, I don't know who you're trying to reach here, but I'm, I'm not here right now. Um, <laughs> well, I'm just I'm I'm thrilled by this. I mean, it's it's I have to say this, but one of the things I don't have a lot I kind of like let lapse is my knowledge of lubricants and that kind of thing, um, because I remember way back when it was Astroglide, you know, for vaginal play. And then it was Crisco or or, (laughs) shortening for anal and never the twain should cross over. And that was simply the way (laughs) things were. And suddenly I wake up and there's all these formulations and all these different things. And I just learned fairly recently that there's even lubes that are good for both, which I was kind of thought was, whoa, wait a minute, that sounds so strange. Um, because obviously, you know, like, like, you know, uh, vaginas are, are different chemicals. They're different. Like you said, water-based, you don't want to use oil-based and stuff. And now there's also different ones that are, that work or don't work with like sex toys, you know, cause silicone lubes will break them down and such. So I'm really excited and I'm blown away by one that they're actually, you have to go through FDA or, you know, medical approval for, for lubricants, but they don't. But they let you put things in condoms without telling you. That seems so bizarre. Um, especially there's a lot of people out there with, like, environmental sensitivity, chemical sensitivity, and so forth. That's just really outrageous. And I'm really jazzed about what you're doing. I think this is fantastic. Um, and I'm so glad somebody's doing it with the with an air of not just strawberry-scented, you know, you know, you know, kind of cheap ass stuff, but something that really is thoughtfully done by someone who's a medical professional. I think that's really wonderful. Well, th- that's the that's the key here, that you know that, that that Karen is a medical professional. You know, and this is mm-hmm. her her work on a daily basis is to attend women. You know, you're also a you're a surgeon too, yeah. right? Okay, so so this is her this is her you know her livelihood. This is what you what you attend to all the time. 
So you're going to care about this product. Now, what Chris just said, though, let, let's make let's make it clear. Both lubes, the the water based and the uh, and they're they're good for any area of the body. Yes, and they're and they're okay. all natural ingredients, so they're perfectly fine for oral consumption as well. Right. So oh, yeah, you think okay. about all these chemicals, and if you're having you know oral sex, do you really want to put that you know in the rest of your body? So that's the other thing too, is like the lube is funny. We, when we were making the sea salt and caramel flavored one, we're like, oh, well maybe we'll just do like, you know, no flavor. It was kind of boring. And so at the time, you know, it's like, what was the most, like what's the most popular kid's name? It's like, what was the most popular, you know, (laughs) flavor? (laughs) So that's why I went with that. But you know, even that is food grade flavor. It's not fragrance. So everything is not irritating, but yeah, you can rest assured that anything that, you know, I have deemed, not just myself, but the FDA has deemed safe mm-hmm. for like the vagina is certainly fine for, you know, anal intercourse. And it's also fine for oral consumption. And in fact, the CBD lube, we encourage people spray it in your mouth and you can even get the systemic effects of CBD if you want to. Cool. That's really cool. Yeah. Now let's go off t- subject a little bit, but this is still on subject. We're not about the lube. What, what, what are we not, what are we not getting from sex education or what what don't we know that we need to know right now about our bodies that that we're ignoring even adults that we're just passing over what's the number one thing that we're, where we're having a problem with do you think i mean some of it is gender specific but you know it i was on a podcast earlier that what i think is so interesting and this does tie in loops there is this misconception by women that if they don't lubricate that their partner's going to assume it's because they're not turned on, right? Which mm-hmm. is not true. So I think the one thing mm-hmm. that we don't realize is, and the same thing for a man with erectile dysfunction, just because you can't get it up doesn't mean you're not turned on. So right. your libido and your sex drive is separate from arousal or your body's response. I mean, there are yeah, just, well, you know there what? Are, Wait, there are, hold on. Say that on, again. That's your mind. Really <laughs> no, really, seriously. That's, I, that's the reason I stopped you. Say that again, because that's really important. So these are terms that we use all the time, right? So libido or your sex drive or being turned on or your desire to be sexually active does not necessarily correlate with arousal, which is your physical response to being turned on, right? Mm -hmm. So the equivalent is like we all, I mean, because of when Viagra came on the market, erectile dysfunction literally became a household term. Everybody knows what that is, right? Sure. But the equivalent of that is a woman not lubricating because it's the same physical response that causes both. A man gets an erection because he gets aroused, blood flow increases, right, engorges that penis. When a woman gets aroused, blood flow is supposed to go to the vagina. And believe it or not, a woman's natural lubrication is just kind of the fluidy part of the, the blood that kind of gets forced through. So if you don't have okay. normal blood flow to the vagina, which can be because of menopause, maybe prior surgeries, different reasons, she may be turned on, but she doesn't get aroused. And if you try to have sexual activity and you're dry, that's like, you know, painful, but then it becomes this catch 22 because if something hurts, how could you ever have libido to have sex again? Because gee, I really want to like, feel like someone's, you know, having sandpaper inside my vagina when I'm sexually active. Mm -hmm. Right, exactly. And, and wow, you know, that's... taking care of both men and women, it is so interesting that so many couples, and not, of course, that sex is you know, the only part of a relationship, but mm-hmm. it it easily falls by the wayside. One or the other partner has an issue, and it's amazing how because of the, and you guys know better than me, the taboo and all that, like no one, even couples don't even talk about it. You know, it's like this elephant in the room that they have a great relationship, but there's no intimacy because someone can't function and nobody wants to be the one to admit that they have a problem because it's too embarrassing. Mm-hmm. Wow, that's, that's, yeah, yeah, wow, you're blowing my mind because but it's, everything but you're it's saying. it's all true and you know it's true. I know it's it is. just, no, you know, you just don't put absolutely. it out there. And, yeah, well, yeah, I don't have a little speechless because just that's surprising that approach yeah i'm blown away uh, but what, if, what the, now, how many times have i talked to her two, two times that she already knows this that's fantastic you sure you're not a psychologist as right. well um, i practice your psychiatry right <laughs> yeah, 
Well, I mean, it's just that that just, it, the, these points are very well made. I mean, and and they're very important. Just with the people we talk to, Chris, and I talk to all the time. <laughs> we always ask them, you know, give give us one salient point. You know, that the thing that you're coming across the most. You know what? And we you know, a wide variety of people from from writers to whatever it doesn't matter um, about just about the subject that they're into. And and you know, I wanted to get the skinny from you because. What what was this? The one you know, the one little element you're seeing, but but that that makes a lot of sense because that is the and then of course the stigma rises and the, and the and the shame and the and the the avoidance and all that kind of stuff and the, the miscommunication it, it becomes it just like you said it just grows and becomes more than it has to be unfortunately you know you know it's really interesting like the so many things in society that we don't think about contributes to the stigma and the shame so for instance. We cannot, not just us, but any sexual product cannot advertise on social media, right? Hmm. Because it's right. sexual. Oh, yeah. no you, you can't use the word no vagina, even though there is no other word. I mean, that is the medical term <laughs> for it. Um, right. And so one of my girlfriends was supposed to give a lecture to high school students for sex ed, mm -hmm. but they told her, you can't use the word clitoris, can't use the word vagina. Can't. I'm like, these are, but these are the real medical, they're not even slang terms. So right, they're not if, even naughty. No, you right. just this is the actual. So if we're it's like, telling it's, young yeah. people indirectly that the real term can't even be said out loud, I mean, the implication of that is, yes, you should be totally embarrassed of your own actual body parts and don't even talk about yeah. it in their medical terms. So, you know, yeah. one of one of the goals of our company is to just normalize the conversation you know, and I think, Ralph, you and I talked about this. I always look at sexual health as mental health. We like to say mental mm -hmm. health, sexual health, and yet we still really aren't treating it like a health condition, and it still mm -hmm. has so much stigma with it. Yeah, I, I think that's true. And, I mean, I, like you said, if you, if you were to go anywhere and talk about a throat problem, you say esophagus. You know, it's not like you have a problem with, you know, <laughs> what, what, what are we, what are we worried about when we say the word, when we say the word vagina? It's just ridiculous. But there is that, there is that Puritan ethic that runs through the country and that always has run through the country that we, we still have not gotten over, you know, and, and it, and it, it's definitely dangerous in some ways, like you're saying, because we're not educated. We're not being educated, mm -hmm. we're not allowing ourselves to be educated. And that's, that's never good. That's never good. Wow. Wow, Chris, I didn't know we'd get this heavy. <laughs> I, mean, I, I mean, amen. I mean, amen and amen and amen, because I, I, yeah. I'm I, so glad to hear you say that, because I know you, Ralph, and men also with myself, it's kind of like a little hobby horse is this is this continuing misconception about arousal that, you know, unless, you know, Mr. Happy saluting and Mrs. Happy is yeah. the river is flowing, it's that's so bogus. It just and it's, yeah. and it's extremely frustrating. Like you said, it's like we can't even use the terms to educate people enough about the realities because of that again puritan reactionary nonsense and mm -hmm. so what we people end up being educated by bad movies and porn which are yeah. about as realistic as you know dragons and right. so they, they come into the sexual life as you said like dealing with a lot of disappointment stress shame guilt because they're not acting like they see in these things yeah, and yeah. no one's telling them a reality and it's just really infuriating yeah well karen you and I, you and i were speaking about that when, when we first talked we were speaking about how the misconceptions you get from something like porn and and, and those other you know and they're all great and stimulating they're all wonderful the whatever however you want to use them but there's not there's not reality and if we had more of reality and weren't so afraid of reality, right, we'd be, we'd be able to counter this stuff and understand where everything's supposedly placed, you know? Or at least if we knew what the basics were, then at least you yeah. had, you know, a reference point. Yeah. But when we don't actually right. talk to young people about, you know, especially I think if you're in certain religion, religious schools, you know, they don't talk about contraception. Oh, yeah. It's like, why don't we... That was fine way back in whatever century, you know, all of these rules were set, but let's get realistic. All the young people are having sex. So, right. you know, hopefully my sons don't hear this, but like, you know, I know my kids <laughs> are going to have sex, right? And so I just put the condoms out there and I'm like, just right. use them, right? Because if they're there, right. the kids will use them. If they actually have to, I mean, my kids even go to the store if he like, you know, runs out of toothpaste. So why would he go to the store to buy a condom? You know, they probably, yeah, right. they probably just rather not use one. So Right. You know, oh, I, mom. I've got right. <laughs> oh, mom. We'll use you know, one next time. <laughs> right. Come on, mom. You know, like, I'll pick it up when I pick up the toothpaste. All right. Don't worry about it. You know? So, 
So, um, do you find? I'm, 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 and I don't know. I mean, if you always practice where you practice, you practice in Beverly Hills, right? I do in Los Angeles. Yeah. Okay, Los Angeles. Is that is practicing there? Not that you would know if you never ever practice anywhere else. Is practicing there any different than practicing anywhere else? The same problems coming across. The same, you know. What do you think? So my my first real job was actually in New York. Um, oh, okay. At, actually, at Sloan Kettering, and you know, I took care of a lot of um, you know breast cancer survivors who can't take any hormones, things like that. Right. So. Yes, the problems are universal, whether you're just a normally aging you know, menopausal woman or you've been put to menopause early because of hormones or you have medical conditions. I mean, there are, I've had patients who have to take a lot of antihistamines that dry everything out. I mean, imagine That's being true, 30 true. and you have such horrible allergies or something, you're taking so many antihistamines, it dries everything out. Wow, that's interesting. Yeah, I did. yeah. Mm -hmm. well, think about it, right? You're you're ingesting that. Why wouldn't it, right? Why wouldn't it affect your body? Yeah. Or even being on like what a lot of people don't realize, even being on birth control for many many years mm -hmm. because it's a lower dose of estrogen than you normally be on, so it also impairs the mm -hmm. way that you might you know react. And so, imagine being a young woman. You don't really. No one's ever talked to you about this. You right. have a new partner. You don't mm -hmm. lubricate. He's totally insulted. You're totally embarrassed. That's the end of it. And you're 32 and you're like, what the hell's going on? Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm, not a, I'm not in menopause. What's going on? Yeah, right. right. I understand. All right, doctor, tell us what's coming up for the company. Is there anything new other than we, real quickly, we're talking about the, the Valentine's thing, but what's coming up? Are you, you, you know, on the horizon, do you see like you're going to be opening a theme park? I mean, what, what's, what's going on? Like, <laughs> be a really oh, interesting theme park. That, that would be, oh. talk about that's the a, Tunnel of Love. There's probably be like a bunch of water slides, <laughs> right? Just to be water funny. Water slides, <laughs> the Tunnel of Love, you know, right. kind of, you know. You know, oh, that, um, that's a fantasy right there. Oh, God, that right <laughs> itself. I tell you, it's like. Right, Chris I can't, can't even, like, touch on the conversation true. more. He's, like, oh, totally, like, in another Don't give Chris any ideas. The last thing he needs is more fiction ideas. I'm already for selling tickets. Who are you kidding? I mean, I'm already drawing up the plans. I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm uh, all there. I mean, just the, just the flume ride alone writes itself. I mean, that's. Just... Chris, <laughs> what, what, do they, what do they call that? that um, it's a sugary pretzel that you get at the. At the Oh, churro. Uh, at a, at a, is it churro? Churro? Yeah, churro. So well, churros we, know are... what the, we know what the churros it's are going to shape like. like. It's, more like a, it's more like a straight donut than a pretzel. Right. There you go. With there you go. Pretzel. <laughs> but, the, but the churro at your park is going to be shaped totally different. Right. <laughs> and it's cream filled. So there you go. <laughs> there you go. It's a, you know, all right. Let's get off this silly, silly stuff because God knows it's we're not silly at all. But Ron, Karen, you're really a tell rector. It. I'm sorry. <laughs> I mean, my, you know, my co-founder always cringes when she knows I get asked this question. Of course, I'll just go on and on about all our ideas, but, you know, yeah. for obvious reasons, you can't do too much. But, I mean, I would like to, you know, there's a lot of movement to personalize medicine, right? It's like mm -hmm. we should really have personalized products for everything else. So um, how, how that's going to be done to be determined. But, you know, I, again, my goals, this, this whole company came out of a need for women. And just, mm. there are so many needs that are unmet. And so mm. it's usually something that I'm finding I see repeatedly over and over in my practice yeah. is usually what drives the next idea. I see. So do you think eventually you will pivot from not, not going into the office and being a doctor and being more of an inventor? Or do you think I'm going to be a doctor till the day I die? Well, you're going to be a doctor till your day. I mean, die, I you know would, I think it'd be nice to probably do both. You know, okay. I mean, you can, because you can practice part time, you know, or, sure. you know, so I, I mean, in my ideal world, I'd still continue. I, I really like what I do. And it's really hard, you yeah. know, like when you train for so long, I mean, it's like oh, God, three years yeah. of medical school, six years of residency, another year of, you know, specialized training. So, you wow. know, I'd like to actually practice as long as I actually train <laughs> before I think about retiring. <laughs> put the time in. Yeah, it makes right. sense. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the, what was that the return? Like the giving the return? Yeah, I understand right. that. I, yeah, that makes sense. Okay, okay. And and you're you're a you're a California lady by birth, or I mean, just a little background on you. We're, we're, I am you a born? South Bend, Indiana by birth, oh, and wow. then yeah, and then actually um, made our way to California, and then my husband 
uh, was doing some training in New York. He's a surgical oncologist. So that's how we ended up at Sloan Kettering. And then we came back to California because both of our families are here. So any, wow, any, inkling, any inkling of the kids going into medicine at all? Zero. Zero. I can tell you, <laughs> my, my, my oldest medicine. one is already in college and he's going to do computer science. And my middle okay. one wants to do um, probably something in some type of like music production. And okay. mm. my daughter is extremely creative. Um, so she'll probably be some type of artist or something. But I, I think it's kind of, it's kind of a par for the course. Okay. Most kids who have two parents that are doctors, none of them go into medicine. I was wondering about that. Yeah, I was wondering how that works. Yeah, I mean, I mean well, at least you you work a lot, and I think you know it just kind of turns them off to see both yeah. their parents working so hard. Right. Well, keep them away from writing because I'm telling you, there's, <laughs> yeah. there's, there's I mean, no, there's no power in that. Podcast for God's sake. <laughs> oh yeah, end, end up being doing a podcast. That's what you end up doing. Yeah, and, you know, that's just, where the money just, is. Tell you, that's where the money is. You know, free lab writing. Right. That's that's really what it is. I tell you, it's yeah. like nothing beats it. Well, the only thing that's funny, Karen, most of the times Chris and I see each other because he used to live in San Francisco. I've always lived in the East Coast. So most of the times we see each other is when we get together when there was kink conventions that we taught at. So that's when we see each other. I and mean, it's not like it's not like we're, we're making the kind of money. We're just, you know, we're flying anywhere we want to see each other. So we use those we saw in those instances and this of course to see each other. But um so Wait, Karen for you guys, know, how do you guys know each other? We oh, we, we, we met, know each other before we actually met. <laughs> yeah, we actually like, did. I was sending him fiction and, and essays that he was rejecting on a regular basis. And then <laughs> Then we met at a convention and we just, it was, it, I mean, it was, it was love bro love at first sight, you know? And, um, and then we, you know, we, we've written together and we, we, we do all, all kinds of things together, but in all kinds of weather. But, um, yeah, I, I, I'm just, I, look, I mean, all the information you're giving us is great. Cause we can, you, I'll be able to synthesize it Good. and get it into a blog and then we put it up on the website and all that stuff. But before we go, I'm going to, I always like to take this from the, the guest's mouth, tell people where to find you and find find mm -hmm. so you can go to oh and by the way i think i told you ralph glissant is slippery in french it's not just some random oh, like that's that wonderful yeah, that's wonderful i know nothing um, I, yeah. and okay. you can get it on our website which is glissantlove.com so g-l-i-s-s-a-n-t love.com and okay. the uh fda cleared water-based lube is also available at blue mercury and at goop so Blue Mercury cool. is, you said they, they're, they're out here, you said, though, too, right? There's some Blue, Blue Mercury Mercury's is nationwide. Okay. I mean, they also have a website, of course, but they also have, you know, okay. actual brick-and-mortar stores all over the country. And then we are on Goop Online. So you're looking to, is is one of the things you're trying to do, get it out there, like, to other places like Blue Mercury? Is that is that, like something that's interesting to you to try to get it distributed further like that or no you know it is for two reasons obviously for business reasons but the second yeah. reason is and i really applaud the retailers who have the balls to actually carry these things because mm -hmm. again when you're seeing something on a shelf it's normalizing it as opposed to having to buy it from some you sure. know mm -hmm. website that you have to like use some you know anonymous browser so that you know nobody sure. knows that you're doing it Absolutely. 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 Yeah, no, I, I think that's, and you know, it's funny you say that, but the retailers, again, I was in a seminar yesterday and a couple of days before, and they are coming around. I mean, um, there's a, there was a lot of talk about, it was what you and I spoke about last week, um, about the actual look of the product, the packaging was so mm -hmm. important because, um, people wanted not to have a, not to be stigmatized, just to even pick up the product and look at it, you know? and uh, things that I never thought about. And Well, it, I mean, again, back to when you want to get in the mood, you get your sexy lingerie, you get your sexy looking lube, you don't grab your, you know, ugly tube of whatever it is. And the sure. other thing yeah. is, especially like if you're traveling or maybe you're with a new partner and you don't, it's different if you pull out something that looks pretty and saying, oh, look at this, mm -hmm. this is my new lube, as opposed to just, oh, hang on a second, let me get my, you know, clinical looking tube of something yeah. to, you right. know, <laughs> fix, to fix my problem. Backpack on my shoulder. Right. With <laughs> <laughs> you know. Yeah, right, you know. Uh, okay. Well, I, I can't, doctor, I can't thank you enough, really. This has been very informative. Very, and very oh, much wow. enjoyed it myself. Thanks, you guys, for I, having me on. It's, it, it's unusual oh, for us to... It's unusual, formative and fun. That's not usually what happens here. It's either fun 
Then we just like, you know, <laughs> kill them, and we don't They're learn. They're mutually anything. exclusive. <laughs> Yeah, well, you, that, I mean, you had, you, you've got the, you got the full Monty because we go informative and fun, but uh, I knew that speaking to you already, though. Doctors, thank you so much. Well, we're, we're going to, we're going to get all this information up on the site and the blog, and I'll send you all that stuff when Great. it goes up. But thank you very, very much for being on Licking Non Vanilla. My pleasure. Absolutely. You thank you bye so bye. much. It was bye absolutely bye. delightful. Take care. Bye bye. So, Chris, what do you think? Was that wonderful? Oh, that was wonderful. Oh, we have to get her back on again. That is just wonderful. I yeah. mean, to, to find somebody who is like that educated, that informed, and to you know producing a product specifically designed for her patients' needs—that is just like a, a, a slam dunk. That is wonderful. Thank well, you, you know so much. Is, well, you know what it is. It comes down to the fact that she's a you know she's a medical professional. You know, mm -hmm. first and mm -hmm. foremost, as, as as you can see, she's a wonderful person to speak to. She's very funny, and she's you know she's she's on the you know I, I can't speak enough good things about her but um but but the medical the medical knowledge is you can't dispute it you know we've had we had various guests on before and it, and some of these things are subjective you know you talk about like you know stripper poles or you talk about writing it's subjective it's like you either like mm -hmm. that comedy or you don't i mean whatever it happens to be but mm -hmm. there's no there's no there's no um arguing her points because they're medically sound, they're scientific, you know, and that's why exactly. I was really, really wanting to get her on because I knew, well, this is a lady who's knowledgeable about this stuff, you know? You know, that was, she is absolutely wonderful. Again, it's like, I just yeah. love the fact that she's using her expertise. She is, you know, a, a medical professional and mm -hmm. really understands this. And I'm just blown away by how much she revealed about, you know, like FDA approval of like, you know, uh, you know, the lubes and then like, yeah. you know, not, the, not having a requirement to, you know, share what's actually in the condom, which is really kind of scary when you think about it, because so many people are just, you know, having sensitivity to certain chemicals and such, but, and then I'm, I'm really excited about our products. I'm definitely gonna check that out as, you know, right yeah. after we got off the show here. I just think yeah. that's absolutely wonderful. Yeah. She's, she's, she's a good egg. She really is. I mean, she's just in, uh, and again, like you said, what she's doing is needed. You know, important stuff. You know, and because uh, mm -hmm. we've seen enough product come by. I mean, you get it, and I get it to review, which is product that we've been in contact with. Um, I remember when you and I went to uh, that big store in San Francisco. Was it Stormy? Uh, was it Stormy well, Mr. Mr. S. And I, you know, and in fairness to Mr. And I don't even know if Mr. S is still there. I'm assuming. They oh, it is. I'm sure it is. I mean, that's such an institution. I mean, hopefully, COVID yeah. hasn't hurt him too much, but it's such a a, a key part of the San Francisco scene, but I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I was just thinking, you know, we, we walked in that place. There were certain things in there that were just, you know, whatever you're into, we've said this all, all along, but there were some things in there that I said that I'm thinking to myself, unless you really know what you're doing, you got to be very careful, very, mm -hmm. very careful. And we've seen it mm -hmm. at conventions as well, where we're like, hmm, um, we, there's actually rooms that you and I skirt when we're at the conventions because we're like, just not <laughs> interested, you know. Um, but but if you're going to be in that, you're going to play with those things or whatever. You got to be really careful and really smart. Mm -hmm. and, oh, um, exactly. And and I'm sorry for interrupting, but it's like you're no, no. totally right. It's like you know that's the thing. It's like you know sexual education in this country is really crap. Um, mm -hmm. And if you're lucky, you're smart enough to find the good places. But for a lot of people, they're just simply typing in like how do how do i do sex and then you know getting all this really poor information and you know it can lead to all kinds of things like everything from like infections to you know contracting serious illnesses to mm -hmm. you know all kinds of things i mean the level of ignorance is really quite scary um yeah. and yeah. again it's like you know the, there's you know people putting out products i'm not saying that every product is bad i'm not saying that you know, that they're, that they are, you know, mostly bad. I just think that there's a lot of companies out there that may not be doing the level of diligence, like, you know, our, our wonderful doctor is, you mm -hmm. know, cause obviously she's a medical professional, but so they're just kind of like putting out products there and they're just, you know, Oh, it's going to be our new coconut flavored, you know, lube that is, you know, based on a, a, a product that is irritating or, you know, might cro create things like allergic reactions and such. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's pretty scary. Yeah. And like you said, uh, we've said this over and over. It, it's a basic of life here we're talking about. It's not mm -hmm. just, mm -hmm. not just, an, you know, we've been involved in some things that, that people would consider taboo and aberrant. But, and even that's, a, those are speculative terms. 
speculative terms. But, but, um, yeah, this is just basics, basics of, of, of just existence. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, we should be better informed in our own health, you know, or, or be able to get informed if we need it, you know. And exactly. Unfortunately, unfortunately, it doesn't happen. So we don't want to leave you on a downer because we're not. I mean, the, the doctor <laughs> gave us some great insight. And she made some very, very salient points. And I'm hoping that a lot of people hear this because I think she did. Um, this has been and always, always is Licking Mom Vanilla with me, Ralph Greco Jr. And also uh, Chris, other resilient is M. Christian. And Chris, as always, it was a pleasure. Always, always, Ralphie. Always, always. Ralph. Always wonderful to see you. And uh, we'll see you next time, kids, on Licking Mom Vanilla. Thanks for listening. And visit us on the web at www.lickingnonvanilla.com.